Hey spooky friends, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new here. My name is Jules and this is a spooky reading vlog. It is almost midweek, so this is a midweek reading vlog. I just finished a Goosebumps vlog and now I am ready to start a new vlog. It is already the Tuesday night. Um, I am doing reading sprints on Maddie's channel tonight, so tonight I'm going to start a new book and I am buddy reading a book with Jesse and Gwen. So we are going to be reading... I was a teenage slasher. Um, I'm a little nervous about it. <laughs> Haven't heard great things, but we're gonna try it. We're gonna see how it goes. And we are also going to be watching slasher movies. So we're gonna be watching, I think we're gonna watch The Babysitter and then The Babysitter Queen of something. I don't know. The two babysitter slashers. That's what we're gonna watch. <laughs> Anyway, so that is what I'm going to start tonight on Reading Sprints. And then other books that I would like to get to this week, I don't know when, like I said, I, I'm going to go for a week on this reading vlog. So I'm at least going to go through probably Sunday, Monday. I don't know. I would like to pick up So Thirsty. Heard a lot of mixed, heard a lot of mixed things about this. I've had uh, a friend one star it. I've had a friend three star it. I've had a couple friends DNF it. So yeah, we'll see. We'll see. I mean, I, I want to read it. it. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. And I love Rachel Harrison. So, I mean, I got to give it a go. So, um, it's not a very long book. So, hopefully, hopefully that'll be a quick one. Another one on my radar that I need to get to is We Used to Live Here. I'm nervous about this one. <laughs> I'm nervous about this one because it, it, it seems to have, like, things that need to be decoded. And I'm not good at puzzles and decoding things. So Brandon said that he can help with it. So I may phone a friend and be like, help me. But I've heard it's really good. So I'm very excited to get to this one. So Friday, Gwen, Keisha, and Gabby are hosting a spooky middle grade readathon. It's only 24 hours. So the two books that I would like to get to for that one is Scare Waves by Trevor Henderson looks super creepy and give me something good to eat by dw gillespie this cover this cover is so stunning i love it i cannot wait to read oh look how cute it's got little spider webs up there is that on every chapter oh my gosh it is that is so fun i love a good book with pictures this one has spooky pictures in it too anyway those are my spooky reads for this week that's the plan let's see how much of this I can actually get read this week. And I'm also thinking I'm gonna make some little spooky treats this week too, because I'm feeling like I'm kind of in the baking mood. So I don't know. I don't know what I'm gonna make yet, but I'm gonna make something. So I will come back when I have some updates on my books for you guys. Hello. I'm back with some thoughts on this. I'm at the 100 page mark. This book is weird and confusing. I was wanting to like this more. So Gwen and I are pretty much around the same area and we're Marco Poloing each other with our thoughts. And this is just so confusing. So the story so far is being told from the perspective of the kid who's the serial killer and it definitely has a little bit of breaking of the fourth wall which I'm not sure I love but not a ton of it but it's basically him telling the story the problem I have with it is that it literally goes he's telling the story and then he's like oh but wait before I tell you this I have to tell you this and he does it a lot <laughs> so like you're literally in this story and then all of a sudden oh hang on I'm getting too ahead of myself I gotta go back and tell you this and so that kind of happens there's a part in here where he tells a story about this kid that ends up it's at their high school that dies and how he dies and that he's kind of I don't know that it was necessarily a bullying thing but it was almost like trying to he was trying to prove himself to be cool enough to be in the cool kids crowd and then something happened, there was an accident and, and he ended up dying. I don't know how long ago that was, but then, you know, we go back to the story where he, him and this, his friend Amber 
are going to this party and he ends up doing something that ticks a few people off and then they kind of retaliate against him and they do something. I can't even tell you what they do because that would be totally spoilery, but they do something to him and like, it seems like he's possibly going to die from whatever they're doing. But then the next thing you know, he's seeing this previous kid that, that died showing up and killing all these people. And it's so confusing. I'm like, are you trying to tell us that this dead kid came back and he's a ghost and killing people? Are you trying to tell us that that's just what you, or you're having a vision of this while you're dying? Are you trying to, what are you trying to tell us? Cause I am super confused. <laughs> Gwen and I are so confused. Anyway, I'm not going to DNF it, but I'm like, at this point, it's just, it's weird. It's confusing. It keeps going, bouncing back and forth between him being in the middle of the story and being like, oh, I got to tell you this. Um, yeah. So that's my update. <laughs> so I'm going to keep reading. I'm not going to DNF it. I'm not going to DNF it. I'm, I've got to 100. I've gotten to a page 100. So I'm like, what? There's like 400 pages in this. So there's 364 pages. So I got 264 pages left. And yeah, I can do it. I'm going to do it. <laughs> I'll be back when I have some more thoughts. Hi. I'm back. <laughs> Look at my earrings. Little crime scenes. Aren't they cute? I figured it was appropriate for this slasher book. That is trash. I finished this book. <laughs> I did not come back after. I just burned through this and as quick as I possibly could just because I wanted to get it over with. So I probably would have DNF'd this. I said I wasn't going to DNF it because I was buddy reading it. Had I not, <clears throat> the dog's tippy tapping. Excuse the tippy taps. Um, had I not been reading this with Jess and Gwen, I probably would have DNF'd this. Yep, I would have. This book is just not it for me. <laughs> so I had mentioned that I didn't know what was going on with the the ghost or whatever guy that came back, the friend that had died and that did the killing. Yeah, we don't really get any answers on that. Except for the fact that in the process of that ghost slasher guy, whatever he is, killing some people, um, that he got blood on him. And it's supposedly that is what turned him into a slasher. And by slasher, he doesn't mean like just a serial killer, like a teenage slasher. Like I, I was thinking when I'm seeing I was a teenage slasher, I'm thinking it's a teenager who went on a killing spree. Yes, yes it is. However, he, slasher, which he refers to himself that as that like a ton in, in this book, means like a horror slasher as far as like Jason, Freddy, Michael Myers, Chucky, <laughs> like someone who can't die, a slasher who can't die, who ha obviously we know it's not real because they can't die. You know, the sequels, they always come back like, come on, fictional, right? So this guy is apparently in like a trance state maybe when he's killing people. This is like his revenge killing, but like he didn't want to do it, but he did it because he's infected. <clears throat> I don't know. I don't, I don't know. Th that's what I got out of this. Honestly, I don't know if that's that. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> anyway, and Amber, Amber's like the girl that knows there's something wrong with him and it's like, it's not your fault and like tries to like figure out like what happened or why it happens or when it happens or like what it, I, I hated this book. I didn't like it. <laughs> so I don't typically give one star, but that's what this gets. Since I didn't DNF it, 
I have to rate it because that's just my own personal preference. If I finish a book, I will give it a star rating. If I don't finish a book, it's a DNF, I don't rate it. This is a one star. So I apologize if there's anybody out there that loved this book, good for you. This was not it for me. Also, it just took him forever to tell this story. This probably could have, we summed this up in like a minute. I could tell you from point A to point B what I read, what, what I thought happened because honestly it was all over the place it could have been a novella <laughs> but like just the amount of times he's like oh but I gotta tell you this first oh I'm getting ahead of myself we gotta go back to this night no we don't no we don't <laughs> just tell the story and, and you know it was just too much it was just too much all over the place I just did not enjoy it did not have a good time with it that is my thoughts that's all I got so I'm about to be off work. Um, I don't think I'm going to pick anything up right now. But I will say a book that I did a reread of that I loved was None Shall Sleep. I read this last year and Gwen just read it recently and she's like, this is so good. And I gave it a four star then and I was like, I'm going to, I kind of forgot about it. And there's a second book now. So I was like, um, which is Some Shall Break. Um, but yeah, I read it, I reread it and I was like, oh my God, I was like, this is so good. It was even better the second time around. So it was kind of along the lines of like Criminal Minds, but again with teenagers, kind of like the Natural series, but then it also had a little bit of like Silence of the Lambs, Hannibal Lecter type stuff. Um, yeah, it was really good. Like the interviewing of the one serial killer to like catch another serial killer. It was really good. So I know I didn't read that for this vlog, but I did read that this past couple days. So I'm gonna let you know, that is really good. And I gave it five stars. So it offset my trash book. <laughs> anyway, um, so I don't know what I'm gonna pick up next. I'm on the fence because I need to read So Thirsty, but I have not been hearing great things about it. And I really don't wanna read two trash books back to back. So I feel like I might pick up I feel like I might pick up, well, Star, we used to live here. Since it's a little different, it's more haunty. Um, and then tomorrow starts the middle grade, spooky middle grade, which is just a 24 hour deal. And I'm gonna start some spooky books for that. So um, I don't know, I may or may not pick something up. We have Slasher Night number two tonight. We're watching The Babysitter to the Queen, Quick Killer Queen, Queen Killer, I don't know. I don't know the name of it off the top of my head. I've seen it before and it's good. I'm going to make some treats and we have movie night. So I may not pick anything up tonight. I may just, just give myself a, give my brain some time to recoup from this book before I pick anything else up. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, I will be back with some thoughts on what I pick up next.
I'm back with some updates. It's like a whole nother day later. <laughs> so I have been so busy at work today. So last night when I was making the cupcakes and cake balls, I decided to listen to Suburban Hell by Maureen Kilmer because my Libby Hold became available. So I was like, oh, why not? I'll read it. It's kind of, it's not, it's not really spooky, but it's, it, it, it's like a thriller, but a cheesy thriller, corny thriller. I don't know how, <laughs> I don't know how to classify it, but it's actually pretty funny. So I am enjoying that. So I got the red velvet cupcakes are done. The cake balls are formed and ready for me to dip them. I am going to go do that now, now that I'm off work. This day was so busy. It was my brain. Anyway, this morning I did start Give Me Something Good to Eat by D.W. Gillespie. I read six pages. <laughs> six pages. Let me tell you what it's about though. So technically the, the spooky middle grade doesn't start until like another four hours, like eight o'clock. Well, that might be their time. Anyway, it doesn't start till this evening. So it goes from 8 p.m. today to 8 p.m. tomorrow. So this says, welcome to Pearl, a town obsessed with Halloween. The spooky decorations, the costumes, the candy. No one seems to notice that every October 31st, a kid goes missing. Mason Miller does though. Somehow he's the only one who has any memory the kids existed at all. When Mason's sister Meg vanishes while they're trick-or-treating, Mason and his friends are pulled into an underworld where monsters roam the streets. They need to fight the evil taking over Pearl, but none of them knows the true danger they're facing. Meg has been stolen by a witch who has no plans to let her go. As shadows of death curl around the trees and lurk behind doors, Mason must use every ounce of bravery he has or be haunted forever by a sister who only he remembers. So, it sounds good. Uh, of the six pages I read this morning, like, it's it has super Halloween vibes. There's a little girl in here dressed up like a bee and her mom is dressed like a sunflower. I was like, that is adorable. I love a matchy matchy Halloween costume. So I totally like dressing up like with your friends as like a duo of some kind or a group of some kind or whatever. Like one year me and two of my other friends were the three blind mice, like just super fun. So my daughter and her friend are actually thinking about dressing up as Max and Caroline from Two Broke Girls, <laughs> which I love that show. Anyway, um, so yeah, I am currently going to continue with Suburban Hell. While I dip my cake balls, I will read this tonight. So I did manage to watch something today while I was working. So I, I rolled my dice again. So I landed on number 20, which is watch or read one of Cameron's recs. That's Cameron Cheney. He's one of the, the hosts of this. One of his movie recommendations was The Halloween Tree, which I have never seen it before, so I was like, okay, I'll just put that up and watch that, you know, while I'm working. And so it was really kind of cute. So, and then I think there's a book, The Halloween Tree. I feel like there's a book and that I have not read. So I may have to check into that. So anyway, so I did get that done today. So I need to roll again to see what my next prompt is. Also, what I have been doing is trying to organize my office because my craft stuff. I have craft stuff everywhere in my closet over there and I bought a bunch of, and on this, let me, let me just show you. You can't really see it, but like all these containers and stuff and that in this chair right here, bunch of stuff that we've ordered for making the pens that we're going to start making. So I need to rearrange stuff in here and find room for it. So I'm actually going to move some stuff to storage that I'm not using right now craft wise. Anyway, but I did organize my stickers. So I had all my stickers in baggies, just like a big Ziploc baggies. I have a lot of stickers, right? But this is kind of open at the end. So like when you turn the pages, they like slide. So you kind of like have to like hold, hold them, hold it and turn it so that they don't all like fall out of it. Cause like if I just go like this and pick this up, they're all going to start sliding but I have all of these stickers. So I have tons of stickers, bookish related stickers, horror stickers, 80s stickers, whatever kind of stickers. When I sell books on Pango, I always send a card and I throw in a few stickers. So 
And then I also have stickers, obviously, for my reading journal and just anything else. But now it's not in a bag. It's all contained right here. <laughs> That's as much progress as I have today. So anyway, let's go finish making the cake balls. cake balls dipped I'm letting them dry and then I'm just gonna drizzle some red icing this is cookie icing I don't know if this is gonna set up or not if it's like kind of royal icing consistency it should harden but I don't know if it will or not so we'll see either way it's going on there the blood's going on there whether it dries or not dripping blood kind of <laughs> this one looks good <laughs> anyway I think it's gonna dry it has that like you can kind of see where it's like it may not dry like like this almond bark stuff this is already dry this dries really fast this on the top kind of looks like it's getting a you know a little bit of a dullness to it which means it's drying so we shall see, but once once the red is a little bit dry, we'll do a taste test. The cupcakes I made, hang on. These are the cupcakes and they are so good. So, 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 so good. Uh, so yeah, box mix, but it turned out <laughs> so good. Good morning. Back to the bumpy ride. It is Saturday. I am going back up to my sister-in-law shop to help her at her boutique today. Um, and Haley's gonna come up for a little bit too. We're gonna give the mother-in-law a little break. So she's kind of tired and she has a bad back and feet and all the things. So um, she's just sore, so she needs a little bit of time. So last night we had sprints for the spooky middle grade readathon with Gwen and Keisha. Gabby um, popped on later. She was at a football game. But I did not read much. I am only 50 pages into my book. I was just so tired. My eyes kept like, you know, slow closing, <laughs> slow blinking. So like I would read and then I would be like, what did I read? And then I'd have to reread. So. I didn't get very far. Also, my husband had movies going, which I don't know about anybody else, but like <laughs> you, you sit down to read, you have no intention of like watching what's on the TV. Like it's things I've seen before, but then like next thing you know, I'm like watching the TV and I'm like, what? what? <laughs> so my husband had on uh, Van Helsing with Hugh Jackman and it was so good. I love it. And so I just kept, watching it and then I was like I need to read and I just kept watching it I need to read <laughs> so my husband's like you're getting a lot of reading done over there and I'm like well quit putting on things that I want to watch so uh needless to say I, I I'm probably only gonna get one book read for the readathon since it's only one day it ends today and I'm busy most of it so I don't even know if I'm gonna have time to get the one done I'm gonna try I will try my best but I still want to read scare waves so because it's a spooky book so I'm probably still gonna I'm still gonna try and read that this month but anyway that's my updates I am almost to the shop so I will check in later when I have thoughts on this book hello I am back with a car update I had to run to the store I left the shop around 3 30 ran home and let my dogs out and swapped out a load of laundry and now I ran to the store to get pizza for dinner and stuff for breakfast. 
so update on my reading. I have managed to get to 70% in Suburban Hell. <laughs> it is still so fun. It is like a adult version of my best friend's exorcism. <laughs> so it's a group of friends that are moms and they live in the suburbs and one of the moms starts acting. Are you gonna go? One of the moms starts acting weird and not herself. And they're like, okay, what's going on with her? There's also like a strange foul smell in the neighborhood around this friend's house. And they can't figure out what it is. Um, so the friends start doing some like investigating and snooping. And they like go over to her house and like go in the back to try and figure out like if something's in her yard. They do find something in her yard. So then they start doing some research through like the historical society. So obviously the friend, they're like, oh, she's possessed. We have to figure out how to help her. So it kind of has that like fun PTA mom's friend is possessed and they're trying to figure it out. Anyway, it's a good time. And then I got to, I was able to read about 50 more pages and give me something good to eat. Such a creepy middle grade book. I love it. <laughs> I'm loving it. Like the descriptions are of, of everything are just so detailed and creepy and it is, it's amazing. So there's a kid in this town who is remembering things that the other town is not, the people in the town are not remembering. And he has like some kind of notebook on him that has like, that's really old. So it doesn't really say where he got it, but it has notes about people that have gone missing. And so like, it's almost like when he has possession of the notebook, it's like he can remember, but nobody else can remember anything. It's like something magic has been like put over the town to help them forget these kids that are being taken. So like every Halloween, a kid disappears, but then the parents don't even remember they have those kids. So it's some kind of like spell that's like put on the town that, this, that the town is under. So, but he's able to remember it. So this year on Halloween, his sister gets taken and he sees it happen. And so do a couple of other kids. They can still see it as well because they, it takes longer for, I think the kids to forget than the parents, but eventually everybody forgets. So they're helping him and they take off because they see what takes her and they follow it and it takes them outside of town and then all of a sudden they get dragged down. It's almost like a Stranger Things. They get sucked down into an upside down town. So it's like their town, but in the under. So it's like the under town. So, and obviously there are monsters there. Oh. So, and in this under town, there is a witch who is doing all this. We don't, ha we haven't got the story yet of like why she's doing this, but it's obviously like, she's an evil witch <laughs> and she's having some type of like party every year she lets these monsters come and she like creates this undertown but like the, like but like any other time except for on Halloween she like disguises herself as a normal like resident it's a good time so I am going to go home and I am going to listen to suburban hell while I make dinner and then I'm going to sit down and read more and give me something to eat. So hopefully I can finish those two books by tomorrow. And then I will probably pick up one more book for this walk. <laughs> if I can get these done early enough, I will probably pick up. I think I'm going to pick up So Thirsty. I think I'm going to dive in. I'm going to go with the bloody scary books and see what happens. <laughs> anyway, I will be back when I have some updates. Bye. Good morning, friends. I am back with another car update. And I'm updating in the car because I have some sad news. And I feel like driving is going to help me stay focused and not get emotional. Yesterday, the universe kind of flipped my family on its axis. We found out, if I don't look at you... <laughs> Not you, but if, I, if I'm not looking, it's because I'm trying to stay focused and not get emotional and drive. So I'm heading to my friend's house right now so we can book our tour, different tour things on our trip. Um, after the shop yesterday, when I got home, I got back home, we had dinner and we 
were just watching TV, I was reading, and I got a call from my sister-in-law. My phone rang, and then immediately my husband's phone rang, which instantly we know that's never good. So I picked up, and it was my sister-in-law, and he picked up, and it was his mother. So we knew it was not good. And we found out that his cousin um, committed suicide and that his Aunt Brenda found him. So it was not good. So the entire family dropped what we were doing and went to be there with them and be supportive of them. So when we got there, um, my husband and I were the first ones there because we were the closest to his cousin's house. And we basically talked to the police and comforted our aunt and you know, we're just there. And the crime scene came out. So we had to wait while they did all that before they would release his body. Um, just kind of all, you know, was there with each other and comforting each other. And unfortunately it did open some old wounds for me, obviously, if any of you have been around for a minute, you know that um, I lost my brother to suicide, and it's coming up on the 12-year anniversary. I'm trying to, trying not to get super emotional. <laughs> so, it just kind of it just was unfortunate and it's not even just that aspect that it was you know a tragic loss it's that this cousin is the brother of the cousin that my husband lost to suicide 10 years ago so we lost my brother to suicide and then two years later we lost his cousin to suicide and now this is his cousin's brother so this is his other cousin his aunt and uncle that these were they, those were his only their only two boys so you know they've now lost both of their sons to suicide um, we just never thought that that's something that he would do um, he was definitely a very quiet person um, a very kind of much a loner didn't really talk much um, but you know none of us you know really considered him I guess you know depressed or suicidal and I mean his even his mom didn't even you know know so really just kind of took her by surprise and took all of us by surprise so I do not have any reading updates because I did not read because I was with my family last night so we are doing our best to get through this and I would just say that you know, if any of you out there are suffering with depression or thoughts of suicide or you know somebody that is, just please talk to somebody and please get the help that you need and that, you know, you are worth being here and it is not worth putting your family through that kind of pain. Please pray for us and, and that we get through this and then, you know, not only did we lose him, you know, last night, but we are also his dad. So my, my husband's uncle, um, has cancer currently. He has been fighting a lot actually since his first son died. Um, he has kind of had a lot of health issues. He had a major stroke that he never completely recovered from. Um, within the last year he has had open heart surgery. Um, we just found out that his heart is actually not working at its full capacity. It's probably only at about 40%. Um, he has esophageal cancer. So he went through radiation and chemo um, and he is supposed to be in a couple weeks having, you know, a lump removed from his esophagus, the cancerous tumor. So not only has he been dealing with the stress of all of that, you know, and his health issues, and then now he has to deal with this as well. So if everybody could just say a little prayer for us um, and for him um, and all of our family, we would appreciate it. So, <laughs> setting that aside, I am doing okay. Um, I, I find that staying busy is actually helpful. So, you know, doing laundry, doing dishes, cleaning, you know, reading my books, listening to audio, all the things just keeps my mind on other things. So this morning when I was doing some cleaning and stuff, I finished up the audio for Suburban Hell, 
really liked it, giving it four stars. I definitely recommend. So after I finished that, I went ahead, I still needed to start another audio. So I went ahead and started So Thirsty. So I am going to um, hopefully read that and finish my middle grade book for this vlog um, before I close it out. I've only read four chapters in it, so I will come back obviously when I have some more thoughts on it. Obviously it's not bad yet, but not much has happened. <laughs> so basically the girls got together and they're going on the, the birthday trip and they've shown up at their destination. That's all I know so far. But anyway, all right friends, that is all my updates for right now. I am on my way to my friends and yeah, I will be back later. I have updates. Uh, so I finished this this morning. I read, I had like 15 pages left last night. I was just so tired I couldn't stay up and finish it. <laughs> so I finished this this morning. This book was so fun. Like just following them through the other dimension. It was just kind of fun watching them like try and figure out how they were gonna get his sister back and like how to like stay away from all the monsters and just like the descriptions of all the monsters. Um, some of them were like super creepy. But it was such a good time. I loved it. I loved the ending. I loved everything about it. It's so pretty. Like, the artwork on this book, I just love it. So, uh, thank you, Lauren, for recommending this book on your channel because it's phenomenal. <laughs> um, and I continued in So Thirsty. My cover is on my shelf. I read five chapters yesterday, so I didn't really get But now I'm already halfway through this sucker. This is such a fast read and I'm actually having a really good time with it. <laughs> so unpopular opinion, I, I'm liking it. I'm liking it a lot. So I, I just, I love her writing, I guess. And just like the content, some of that just doesn't really bother me. So um, basically Sloan and her friend, they were on this, where I had only read to was that they had showed up to their like vacation spot or whatever. Well, um, and her friend is very much a party girl. So she wanted to go to this party, met this guy at this bar. And then next thing you know, the next day, she's like, we're going to go to a party. And she's like, no, I don't want to go to this party. She's like, yeah, go. It didn't end up being a party though. I mean, it was a party, but it was like an orgy party. <laughs> so, so, um, she was like, I don't want any part of this. And then things happen and they get attacked and there's vampires. Let me just read before I spoil anything for you guys. I mean, it kind of, it kind of alludes to the fact like you, you would not be able to read this and be like, oh yeah, they're obviously going to be vampires. <laughs> Wild night out, a group of mysterious strangers. It takes a horrifying turn that changes Sloan's and Naomi's lives literally forever. <laughs> and then the friends are forced to come to terms with some pretty eternal consequences. It's funny though that people are like, oh my God, there's so much like raciness in this. It literally in the description says, in this bloody seductive novel. <laughs> so anyway, so yes, there are talks about some racy things. It's a little bit of spiciness in here. So if that's not your thing, you know, it, it doesn't bother me. It's like I said, I don't actively seek out like smutty or racy books or spicy books, but if it's in there, I just go with it. And some of the parts were actually kind of funny, like whether, when she like, <laughs> when she comes out and sees some of it, but, and then there's other parts, like her friend, her friend is a wild, a wild child and not real responsible. And so Sloan is the one who has to be the responsible friend or is trying to be the responsible friend. So, um, but her friend, I could see how people would think her friend's annoying, but I kind of also just feel like she's, she's just pretty like doesn't give a, a hoot and just does whatever. Um, anyway, she's there. Th I'm loving it. They're both fun to me and I'm liking their like good girl, bad girl type thing. <laughs> so anyway, I'm having a good time. I got something sticky on my book, but that is all the updates I have for now. I am making dinner. I'm going to continue to listen to this and then I have reading sprints with Jess tonight. So I am hoping to get this book done tonight, but as soon as I get my dogs whining, my dog's whining. There's always somebody whining, walking around, or barking in my videos. I apologize. <laughs> anyway, as soon as I get this book done, I'm going to close out this video so that I can start a new vlog. Okay?
check back soon. Hello friends. I'm back with the final update. I wanted to show my little, look at my spider earrings. Are they so cute? And it's sunny out today and they're like sparkling. And I've got my Petty Witches ice cream parlor. So it's the uh, Hocus Pocus. Anyway, um, here for, excuse me while I adjust you guys. Okay, sorry, I had to adjust you guys. On my lunch break, I gotta run an errand, so I thought I would come on and just do my final update so I can close out this vlog for you guys. So I did finish So Thirsty last night on Jess's Friends. I feel like you're crooked. If I'm crooked, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, I had a good time with the book. So I am pleasantly surprised because so many people were saying they either hated it, DNF'd it, gave it bad stars, you know, whatnot. But that is why I love reading and I love readers because everybody has so many different opinions and takes on things and I just love that. So there are a couple of other ladies that I found that did enjoy it as well. So I love that. So we have book discuss. So we are going to be discussing So Thirsty on Gwen's Patreon. Uh, we have a book discussion at the end of the month for it. So I am very excited to hear everyone's thoughts on it because I feel like it's very one way or the other. I don't know that there was a lot of mid. <laughs> Either people really liked it or really didn't like it. So I really liked it. Uh, the, the friend was kind of comical in the fact that she had to be babysat. So it was like a new vampire. So I don't know if anyone's ever watched like True Blood or Interview with the Vampire, things like that. When a person is a new vampire, they have that blood thirst to where they can't control it. And they have to be usually babysat by somebody, even Twilight when she's turned. Like they have to babysat her to make sure she doesn't go out and like kill people. So it's, it's just kind of comical that her friend is the party girlfriend is just like, I I'm so thirsty. I want to just eat everybody. And Sloan's just like, okay, we cannot be just out here eating people. Like she's a babysitter. So I just kind of thought it was funny, um, that she has to babysit her. And then it does go into a little bit more of like their friendship and like, just kind of like their relationship as friends and, and what they should or shouldn't have maybe done, you know, along the way as being friends. Um, so I did enjoy that aspect of it as well, but super fast read. I think I read it in, mostly in a day. I did start it like outside of like five chapters. I read all of it yesterday. So I am giving it four stars and I am going to go ahead and read some of her other backlist books that I have not read. Like I still need to read, um, Black Sheep. And I feel like there's another one. I don't know, but I am going to read Black Sheep. A lot of people also said they didn't like that, but I mean, here I am liking a book that a lot of people <laughs> said they didn't like. So, you know, there's that. Anyway, that is going to be it for this vlog, friends. I had a great week reading all the spooky fun books and making the treats and I just had a great time with this vlog and I hope you guys enjoyed it as well. Unfortunately, I did have the sad news over the weekend, but um, we are still dealing with that. I do again ask you all to continue to pray for my family as we, you know, go through this journey of trying to deal with another family loss to suicide. And on that note, again, please, 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 if you know somebody who is depressed or you yourself are depressed, please reach out to someone and please get help. Suicide awareness is just so near and dear to our heart that we want to do something. So I think we may put something in the works for making some, you know, pens, like the suicide awareness pens. They have some that have like the semicolon on them. Uh, so I think we may try and do like a, you know, fundraiser selling, you know, those pins and then donating some money to suicide awareness. So, um, if that happens, if we end up doing that, I will let you guys know, obviously. And yeah, that is it. I don't have anything else to say. <laughs> uh, so 
I usually, I, it's weird to end a vlog in my car, but I don't really have anything else to say about anything. And I need to start a new vlog. So until my next video, friends, be yourself, be awesome, be kind.